The summer of 1984 was a summer like no other along America's Pacific coast. It's one that Californians are unlikely to forget, as shark attack after shark attack made headlines. No one felt safe. Each feared that they could be next. And for 28-year-old Omar Conger, that fear became a reality. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. Welcome to Final Affliction. Omar Conger was a 28-year-old free diver and abalone fisherman. He enjoyed the adventure that abalone fishing brought him, down below the waves, searching for the perfect size shells on the rocky bottom. He was fishing off California's Pacific coast, a coastline that had been hit by a cluster of shark attacks that same summer. It began on June 28th when a 28-year-old woman was killed by a great white whilst swimming in Bodega Bay. Less than two weeks later, a 19-year-old man lost both of his legs to a great white shark whilst bodyboarding near San Diego. Just two days after that, a 16-year-old girl suffered serious leg injuries when she was attacked off Pismo Beach. People called for the Pacific beaches to be closed. Many feared for the safety of their loved ones. Those who entered the water questioned whether they would be next. There were 11 attacks during the summer of 1984. Sadly, there was more to come. On the morning of September 15, 1984, Omar Conger headed to Pigeon Point, situated between Half Moon Bay and Santa Cruz, California. He had decided to go diving for abalone with his friend, 33-year-old Chris Ram. They pulled on their wetsuits, Omar tugging on a full-length black one. Looking out at the open water, the sea was calm, perfect for them to dive for abalone near the shore. They took with them a blue and yellow surf mat into the water. Pushing the inflatable mat in front of them, they swam out 150 meters from the beach. They used the mat as a float to hold onto between dives. They took it in turns to search the rocky bottom for abalone. The sky was overcast and gray, the sun barely breaking out from behind the clouds. There was barely a swell in the water. After 20 minutes or so, the two friends had collected two or three abalone. They scoured the seafloor. The rocky substrate and reef was covered in short kelp and sea grasses. The fronds waved with the gentle motion of the sea. Each time the men dived down, they made their way along the reef, searching for the shells clinging to the rocks. Although the sea was calm, the visibility was low. Omar and Chris could only see about a meter in front of them. Sometimes they could spot the abalone near the surface and then dive directly down to collect them. But this day was different. This time they could only spot the abalone once they were fully submerged and just feet from the ocean floor. The water was unusually murky that day. Free diving was tiring. Holding their breath as they dived down 12 feet under the water was very taxing on the body. They would then float back to the surface, grateful for that sudden intake of air. They took a rest, treading water, floating at the surface. Omar looked out towards the west, his body vertical in the water column. Five meters away, Chris hovered by the surf mat, holding onto its sides. He looked northwards, out past Omar. Chris had regained some of his energy and was ready to dive down again, but as he watched his friend, he saw something that shook him to his core. In an instant, right before his eyes, an enormous shark broke through the surface of the water. Its jaws were agape. Its eyes rolled back in its head as it locked its serrated teeth around Omar's upper legs and waist. It had come from nowhere. Less than a second later, Omar had been dragged beneath the surface. Chris rushed towards where his friend had been. He ducked his head underwater, desperately searching for him through his fogged up mask. He saw a commotion of bubbles. The water turned red. Underneath, Omar was fighting for his life. He was pushing at the shark, grappling with it, trying to get it to release its grip from around his legs. He beat it on the face, its teeth cutting into his hands as it readjusted its grip on him. Then the shark re-emerged. Chris watched in horror as the shark came up to the surface a second time. 
he saw its immense body arc out of the water. He saw its brute strength and power, its huge back, its dark gray skin breaching just feet from where Chris floated. Then he saw its mouth, still gripped between its teeth. Omar was hanging limp. As it came to the surface, the shark surprisingly released Omar, spitting him out. It then dipped beneath the ocean and headed straight for Chris. He felt a surge of terror as the shark came towards him, but he needed to get to his friend. He could see its dorsal fin slicing through the water. He knew it would be onto him in less than a second. He made a mad dash towards Omar who was floating several feet away. Mercifully, the shark dived below Chris, coming within inches of him. Chris grabbed hold of Omar and pulled him towards the surf mat. Whilst kicking and treading water, he managed to haul his friend onto the mat, pulling his body out of the water. Omar was still breathing, he was still alive, but it was a race against time. Chris didn't know where the shark was, he knew it was still nearby. The thought of it circling him beneath the surface urged him to swim faster. It spurred him on. He kicked with his legs, propelling them towards the shore. He didn't know if each stroke forwards would be his last as a trail of blood flowed into the sea behind him, enticing the shark. Omar's breaths became shallow. He didn't utter a sound. He didn't move. He lay on his back, his eyes closed, his chest rising and falling slightly. The swim to the shore was agonizingly slow. Chris screamed for help. He shouted for people to come to his aid. Just feet from dry land, he didn't know if Omar was still alive. He was unresponsive and looked pale. Finally, Chris made it to shore. He pulled the surf float up the beach. He knelt down beside Omar and tried to administer CPR, but his friend had already died. He held his head in his hands. He couldn't believe he had just witnessed his friend's death. How their typical abalone fishing trip had turned into such a nightmare. It could easily have been him. Why had it been Omar? Why had this happened? Omar and Chris weren't the only ones in the water that fateful morning. A pair of divers were scuba diving less than 100 feet away when the attack happened. They were Steve Gazetta and his friend. They had been completely oblivious to the attack. Shrouded in the murkiness of the ocean, they hadn't seen the enormous 15-foot shark approach the two free divers. They were only alerted to the tragedy when they heard Chris crying out for help. They surfaced and saw Chris pushing his friend to shore. Terrified, they dashed to the beach and got out of the water as quickly as possible. It had been a shocking attack. Chris and Omar had never seen any sign of the shark. The murkiness of the water may have added to the tragedy, with many marine biologists stating mistaken identity for the cause of many shark attacks. The coroner reported that Omar had died from blood loss. Severe cuts and gashes were evident across his thighs and buttocks. His femoral arteries had been severed. His hands had cuts across them where he had bravely attempted to push the shark away. Large numbers of elephant seals were common off California's coastline, five miles south of Pigeon Point where the attack occurred. They attract sharks to the area. Officials warned swimmers and surfers after the attack. Large signs were put up, advising people not to enter the water due to a fatal attack. Incredibly, surfers still hit the waves just hours after the fatality. No one on America's west coast will forget that terrible year. A year in which more than one person lost their life at the jaws of a shark. Some shark experts have suggested a change in sea temperature and salinity that year as being a reason why there were so many more attacks than usual. Others have pointed the blame at overfishing, a depletion of the shark's typical prey. Whatever the reason, swimmers, divers, and surfers always know that when they enter the water, they are in shark territory, and their worst nightmare may one day come true. A shark swimming up from the depths below, bringing with them their final affliction.